Now, about nine months ago now, I made a video on the Residio Honeywell Home balancing thermostatic radiator valves. And if you haven't seen that video, I will put a link in the description below so you can catch up on that after you've watched this video. Anyway, in this video, I show you how to install them and set them up. And at the end of the video, I explained that I was going to do a bit of an experiment in seeing how these balancing valves work and if they do work or not. Anyway, I've finally done it. So let's get on with it. Get over to my house and have a look at this experiment on the Honeywell Home Residio automatically balancing thermostatic radiator valves. Now, before we start, let's have a quick recap on how we actually set up these balancing valves. So, first thing we need to do is measure the radiator. So, this is a steel panel radiator and it's a Type 22. So, it's a double panel, double convector. So, it is 500 millimeters wide and 600 millimeters high. First thing I need to do is open my app. So click on the app. Now the valves we need are the Honeywell Home Valencia VT15. That's what we've got here. So I need to click on that. Now, I just said it's a steel panel radiator. So we need to click on the steel panel. Now, first thing, uh, inlet flow temperature. Now our inlet flow temperature for this one is 55 degrees. That's what I've set my boiler to. The outlet temperature is set at 10 degrees, but what do we want on the outlet? Well, technically for a condensing boiler, we're looking at 20 degrees, but are we really going to get that? Realistically, you'll get between 10 and 20 degrees on a condensing boiler unless you've completely redesigned the system. You've installed new pipe work, you put in brand new radiators, not just swapped over the boiler, but we will give it a 10 degree difference. So we will put that on 45 rather than 35. Now our Delta P is our pump. And if you go over 20 kilopascals, uh, you'll get noise in the radiator, so it doesn't allow you to go past that anyway. And I can't find any information on what we would set it to. And it comes as set at 10 as a default. So we'll leave it at 10. Now, our radiator type, we need to click on that because, like I say, we've got double panel, double convector. So that's a type 22. Now it says select the height. So we said it was 600 high and select the width is 500 and it's telling us that we need to set our valve at presetting of number three. How do we do that? What we're gonna need is one of these little keys or technically you could do with adjustable spanner or I think it's 10 milli. So we need to remove the head. Around the top of here, are numbers one to six and there is a little line here in the brass which tells us where we need to set it so we need now to turn this to number three on the setting so technically now this radiator is set to give us a balanced flow across the system of 10 degrees difference between our inlet temperature and our outlet temperature. Hopefully that's gonna work. Now, what I've done is I've split the house into two sections. One side of the house has got these balancing valves and the other side of the house has just got standard radiator valves. Now, the thermostatic radiator valves, I've set them all to maximum six. And all the lock shield valves are all fully open on the balanced radiators and the non-balanced radiators. 
So that's basically what I've done. Now I've only got three radiators on this back side of the house with no balancing valves. So I've done the same thing. I've turned off all the other radiators on this side of the house. So I've only got three radiators on the balancing valves to give it a fair comparison. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the boiler on, we're going to let it run and we're going to see if one, this radiator balances and the one in the bedroom, which is just behind us, we're going to see if that balances also. And then we're going to go to the boiler and we're going to see what the flow and return sections are on the boiler to see if they give us a difference in our flow and return temperatures. Anyway, let's get on with it and get this experiment sorted out. Now what I've done is I've got my four TPI SP323 Bluetooth temperature probes and I've connected this radiator to my phone and the one in that bedroom there which is the end of that circuit this is the end of this circuit onto my iPad so we can read them. The boiler's been on a couple of minutes now and what I've got here is a flow temperature of 44.9 and I've got a return temperature of 24.7 with a difference at the moment of 20.2. Let's go into the bedroom and have a look and see what we've got there. So on this one with the two probes connected, we've got a flow temperature of 39.2 and a return temperature of 30 with a difference of 8.8. .8. Now, the radiators aren't completely warm yet, so what we're going to do now is leave it to get warm and then let's see what it is once the radiators are fully warm to touch. So we've been running about 10 minutes now and you can see we have a flow of 40.2 we have a return of 32.3 with a difference of 7.9 degrees C on this one in the dressing room we've got flow temperature of 46.6 we've got a return of 36.9 and we've got a difference of 9.7 so it is trying to balance and give us this 10 degree difference now we seem to be pretty stable now this is 40.3 on the flow 32.8 on the return 7.6 difference remember this is the last radiator on this circuit let's go and check the dressing room now in the dressing room we've got a flow of 46.8 return of 37.8 with a difference of 9 degrees so technically there's not that much difference in the temperature difference of between the flow and the return. There is quite a bit of difference in the flow temperatures. So let's go and check the dining room one, which is actually on the balance side. Now this dining room radiator is quite a big radiator. It's 1400 long by 600 high. And again, that's a Type 22, so double convector, double panel. What we've got is, I don't know if you can see that, we've got a flow temperature of 46.1. We've got a return temperature of 37.6. And we've got a temperature difference of 8.4. So remember the 10 degrees, 1.6 degrees out. Anyway. <laughs> They don't really feel that hot, these radiators, because the flow temperature is only 46 degrees. But this is completely hot all the way through. So, let's go and have a look at the living room one on the other side, which isn't balanced. Now again, this living room radiator is quite a big radiator, well, lengthwise. It's 2 metres long, but only 400 high. But this radiator is a Type 11, so that's single panel, single convector. So we have a flow temperature of 42.5, we have a return temperature of 36.2, we've got a difference of 6.2. So you can see the flow temperature on this unbalanced side is a lot less than it is on the balanced side. Now we do have another radiator on the other side of this living room which is on the balanced side, so let's check that one out. 
So this second living room radiator is only quite small. It's only a meter long by 400 high, but it still is a double double convector. And this is giving us a flow temperature of 44.9, a return temperature of 36.2, so a difference of 8.8. .8. So the last radiator we've got to check is in Will's room, which is on the unbalanced side. So this is the radiator in Will's bedroom, which is technically the first radiator or the closest radiator to the boiler. Now this radiator is 600 wide by 600 high and again is a type 22, so double panel, double convector. You can see we've got a flow temperature of 39.7. We've got a return temperature of 37, now changing to 37.6, 37.7, with a difference of two degrees. Remember, this is not on the balance side. So that's the six radiators we've looked at. So let's have a look now at the flow return temperatures at the boiler on the two circuits. So here we are under the boiler. Now the iPad is connected to the unbalanced side and my phone is connected to the balanced side. So you can see the flow temperature on the unbalanced side is 52 degrees. Boiler set 55, remember. We've got a return temperature of 46 with a difference of 5.1. On the balanced side, we've got a flow temperature of 44.9 We've got a return temperature of 34.1 and we've got a temperature difference of 10.8. So you can see on the balance side we are getting a temperature difference of 10 degrees back to the boiler but on the unbalanced side it's not. We're getting a 4.6 degrees difference. Now I think you can see from the video that these uh, Residio Honeywell Home Balancing Thermostatic Radiator Miles tried their hardest to keep this 10 degree difference between our flow and return across the radiators and across the system. But I think what was messing them up was the system on the other side of the house which wasn't balanced at all. So I think when the water was coming back to the boiler and it was mixing the two uh, it was causing a few problems so what I've decided to do is close down the unbalanced side of the house because I've got two isolation valves right near the boiler and then I'm going to run all the radiators on the balance side and I've got six radiators on that balance side with the thermostatic radiator valves on but that's for another video. That's for part two. Now, don't forget, if you haven't watched my first video on these balancing valves, then there is a link in the description below. And look out for part two of this video where I'm just going to be using these balancing valves. But I'm also going to see if I can get a 20 degree difference across the whole of the installation. Anyway, hopefully you've liked this video and I'll catch you on part two soon. Cheers.